Felix Lenbach House. The historic villa is getting a spectacular new annex. For now, it's still a work in progress. But a sculpture by Danish Icelandic artist Olafur Eliasson, titled Firbulverk, already graces the atrium. It's an eight meter high spiral made of glass and steel. The renovation of Munich's most popular art museum was four years in the making. The word museum comes from Museion, which means the Temple of the Muses, where the Muses danced. So a museum isn't a static, unmoving institution. The new annex holds state-of-the-art exhibition spaces. It's all set to reopen to visitors this May. Just down the road, there's the Alte Pinakothek. The art museum opened in 1836. It holds works by European artists dating from the 14th to the 18th centuries. Most pieces were originally owned by the Royal Wittelsbach dynasty. The collection includes paintings by many old masters, among them Albrecht Dürer and Titian. The old Titian is wonderful with his crown of thorns. It's one of the loveliest paintings. Rubens is amazing, but it's too much flesh and just too massive. The Rubens collection at the Alta Pinacothek is world-renowned. At over six meters high and four meters wide, the Great Last Judgment is Rubens' largest oil painting. The Alta Pinacothek plays in the major league. It's one of the world's most famous galleries thanks to the old Wittelsbach family's passion for collecting. Under the reign of King Ludwig I of Bavaria, Munich became renowned as a city of art. In 1830, he commissioned the Glyptotec Museum on Königsplatz Square to hold his sculpture collection. It contains sculptures from the Archaic period to the Roman era. The Glyptothek is Munich's oldest museum, which is itself a mark of distinction. And it was created by Ludwig I personally. He was a connoisseur of Greek and Roman art, and an admirer of classical antiquity. Ludwig I is also to thank for another museum, the Neue Pinakothek, with a collection that focuses on the 19th century. It holds works by Karl Rotman, Ludwig's favorite landscape painter. And acquisitions such as Italia and Germania by Johann Friedrich Overbeck. Ludwig I elevated the status of art like no other Bavarian ruler. The of museum Building museums and amassing large art collections was a very important aspect of his monarchy. They were all ways to contribute to popular education and to transform the Kingdom of Bavaria into a center of art and culture. Although the days of royal patronage are long past in Munich, art and culture still hold pride of place in the city. One new addition is the Brandhorst Museum which opened in 2009. The striking building in the gallery district houses a large collection of modern and contemporary art, including what is Europe's largest holding of works by Andy Warhol. The pop art icon is a major drawcard for the museum. Everyone knows Warhol, so that makes him an excellent point of entry for people who might not be familiar with contemporary art. But the collection also offers plenty of opportunities to get to know other artists and styles. In a nearby underground station, students at Munich's Academy of Fine Arts have staged their own exhibition. This installation is set into motion by the wind of the subway entering the station. 
A space to the side holds more exhibits by young artists. The works all revolve around the same topic. The idea is to observe how the surplus energy generated by urban life can be put to creative and artistic use. The art students are often there to demonstrate and describe their works. The gallery is located at the university subway station. Art in motion. It's just one of the many cultural attractions Munich has to offer.